So we're here at St. Paul's Church and we are closing out our six weeks of construction. So why don't we go inside and take a look? So we're standing here at the altar, and as you can see, we have assembled the scaffolding to begin the interior restoration of the stone, as well as the plaster and uh, the paint repairs. So we have installed two layers of protection for the organ pipes, as well as protection of the high altar and the organ, and we have started the stone cleaning up top. So if you're ready, we can go take a look. So we're here on the north elevation right behind the organ player and this is what we are working on as far as the stone cleaning. So if you start at the top you'll see what has already been cleaned and panning down you're going to see an uncleaned area with dark black staining on the stone. A lot of it comes down to um, clean water and a mild surfactant with a heavy dilution and just, just good scrubbing with a soft nylon brush. Nothing too aggressive, nothing metallic because we don't want to damage the stone and we don't want to hurt the stained glass in any way. So we're still on the high altar scaffolding right above the chancel and um, looking at these coins and this arch um, we had gone through and cleaned a lot of dark um, black streaking and staining through here. So as you can see, this is a drastic and dramatic transformation. So you can see here on the left an area that has been uncleaned on the north elevation. And as we look across towards the south elevation, you will see a section that we have cleaned of the coins and the archway. So we're here at the high altar and just in the other areas we installed the protection on the stained glass. I folded back the lead to where we could tape everything and we are systematically working our way down um, again with clean water, heavy dilution of a mild surfactant using brushes such as toothbrushes, small nylon brushes, everything that would be soft to go through and essentially try and clean all of this stone. So we are here right above the organ pipes and as you can see this is the level of protection that we have installed. So we've installed not only um, tape and plastic but we also have clamps going through and securing everything. That way we don't have any excess draping, potential holes, tears, gaps. So we've gone through and sealed not only the pipes themselves but also the lattice up here in the roof. So we're here on the north elevation and this is one of the windows that has been completely cleaned. So as you can see, we fold back the new lead flashing to gain access to as much stone as possible. And this is actually one of the first windows that we have actually done all the plaster repairs to. So if you look on the left side of this jam, you'll see all of this plaster has been completely removed. The lath had to be replaced because of the corrosion to it. And then the plaster had to be completely rebuilt. There has been patches here and the idea and understanding is is that we don't want this to be a flat smooth surface. We want this contour, we want this texture to it. That is how it is throughout the church and that's what we want to maintain even in our repairs. So here's an example of the columns and the archways that have been cleaned. So as you can see, what was once gray is now bright, vibrant colors, which is actually natural materials from the Ohio sandstone that is seen here. Uh -huh. So here we are on the east side of the church, and we are actually looking at the rosette windows. So. Um, we haven't started cleaning these, but we did install the temporary protection around the, uh, the plaster. So this is a good before, um, especially on the window behind us. You're going to see a lot of damage um, and a lot of staining that's going to take a lot of work to try and remove. So 
So we're here on the South Clear Story windows, and this has already been cleaned. The plaster repairs are um, complete. So as you can see, this is a lot of veining that you will see, which is natural to the stone. So in some of these sill stones, which is below the windows, in some of these sill stones, we see a lot more of that color, a lot more of that vibrancy of this Berea sandstone. So we're here at the North Clear Story and um, all the windows that are located near the roof line, you can see all this dark staining. So these stones have already been cleaned and what we have found is this is residue from the waterproofing that was installed previously on the flat roof right outside of these windows. So after the cleaning process, we have installed a series of samples for additional cleaning. And if we walk down just a couple of windows, we'll be able to see those. So we're here at our cleaning samples. Um, you can see one clean section here where my fingers are tracing. This center section has been undisturbed by these new mock-ups. And then right below it is another cleaning sample. So you can see we can, we can get a little bit more material out, but there's always gonna be that little bit of discoloration at this elevation. We're, we're limited as far as what we can use because a lot of the products and the materials that we use on the outside, we can use on the outside but not on the inside because it requires heavy, basically pressure washing. We've got to get the material out. So I can't put 10, 15 gallons of water at high pressure on this stone. So we're limited as to what we actually can use and then how effective that will be in, as far as the cleaning. Uh, overall, I like the performance of the light duty restoration cleaner. Um, the poultice has a little bit better um, as far as the removal, but it blends in a lot more efficiently with the light duty restoration cleaner. So with all the woodwork, um, we have gone through and we have cleaned a lot of it. There was a, a lot of dust and dirt up on top of the wood as well as all the toothing. So we've gone through and we've cleaned this area and then anywhere we have access to we're going to do the same treatment. Just you know, light water, a, a, a light sponge and just try and care for this wood. So we're here at the south elevation and along these roof beams um, where the flat roof is right above us, we see a lot of checking. Now, checking is a natural thing in woodwork, um, but this area specifically, at, even though there are a series of fasteners and brackets and large bolts, which was part of the original construction, just as a belts and suspenders, we're gonna go through and help reconnect um, these two pieces of wood at this lower part, even though the higher elevation, and this wood is still very much intact in one piece, we're just gonna help bridge this gap where it has um, a little bit of excessive checking. So as a six week recap, um, we are about 70% complete with the stone cleaning. We're about 55% complete with the plaster repairs. Um, we're about to start the, the painting work and we've had one very successful wedding and one very happy bride. So um, thank you all again for this opportunity and thank you for your time.